I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. During Wednesday's House Oversight Committee hearing about gun manufacturers, Representative Jamie Raskin gave fiery remarks about gun violence and the January 6th attack on the Capitol of the United States. He condemned his colleagues who continue to think the insurrection was simply a tourist visit. Raskin spoke about the Second Amendment, claiming it does not give an unlimited right to carry whatever guns you want. He also lambasted his Republican colleagues, saying, quote, the Second Amendment does not give you the right to engage in insurrection. The gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Uh, Mr. Daniel, you said that the suffering of the children in Uvalde and other victims of the AR-15 was, quote, unfathomable to you. Does this mean that you do not understand the impact of AR-15s on human flesh and the human body? Congressman, the what what I was referring to is is the hor horrible situation that these people had to endure, and and um, do, do we understand and, the impact on the human flesh of your product? Uh, er, yes, sir. Every every firearm is, is capable of of killing a human. Okay, reclaiming my time. Um, in his important testimony today, Mr. Bussey referenced the bloody violence that we experienced on January 6, 2021, something not mentioned by our colleagues who continue to think it was a tourist visit and are clearly soft on criminal insurrection and soft on criminal violence against our police officers. Americans killing Americans, that's a good description of what's taking place with gun violence today. But on January 6, we experienced the worst domestic insurrection against our government since the Civil War. More than 150 officers were wounded and injured, and several people were left dead in the rampage. The rioters shut down the counting of electoral votes and drove the House and the Senate out of our chambers. And although there was a huge arsenal of pistols, rifles, AR-15s, and other firearms brought to the area by the insurrectionists on January 6, the email and text traffic of the extremist groups reveals that many of them decided to temporarily leave their firearms in specific sites outside of D.C. because of the district's stringent gun laws until they thought the firearms would be necessary. Now, amazingly, in the wake of this savage insurrectionary attack against our government, the NRA and its followers in Congress continue to propound the idea that the Constitution, specifically the Second Amendment, gives people right to violently attack and overthrow the government of the United States. This so-called insurrectionary theory of the Second Amendment maintains that its purpose is to allow citizens to wage armed resistance if they think the government is being unfair or unjust. The reading is absurd and flies in the face of the plain text of the Constitution, which in at least seven different places that I count clearly forbids and punishes armed resistance against the U.S. government. A few examples. The Republican Guarantee Clause, Article 4, Section 4, provides the U.S. shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and against domestic violence. This was written in the Constitution specifically in response to Shays' rebellion and armed resistance to the government, which the founders strongly condemned. The Treason Clause, Article 3, Section 3, Clause 1, states treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them or in adhering to their en enemies. What is violent insurrection against the government if not levying war against the United States? Section 3 of the, 14th Amendment, of the 14th Amendment says anyone who's sworn an oath under the Constitution to defend it and support it but betrays it by engaging in insurrection shall never be allowed to hold federal or state office again. And one more example, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 says Congress shall have the power to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. Now, do our colleagues really believe that the Constitution explicitly and repeatedly gives the government the power to suppress violent insurrections, but the Second Amendment in invisible ink gives the people the right to engage in violent insurrections? This is absurd and outlandish. And when I've pointed it out, the only substantive response I've gotten from my colleagues is a quotation from Patrick Henry, an anti-federalist who strongly opposed the Constitution precisely because he thought it gave the government way too much power and the people not enough to rebel against the government. And when I pointed this out, my friend uh, Mr. Roy of Texas, who's by far the most articulate and able defender of this doctrine, concedes that I'm right about the Constitution, but shifts over to talk about the Declaration of Independence, which I cheerfully concede is a revolutionary document 
and which explained why, after a long train of abuses and usurpations by the Crown and Parliament, we needed to dissolve the political bands of union with England. But that's the whole point. We are governed by the Constitution, which is positive law, and nowhere does it grant a right of insurrection. It opposes it at every turn. As a matter not of constitutional law, but natural law, people can decide to overthrow their government, but you do that on your own time, at your own risk. The Constitution does not give you the right to destroy the Constitution and the government. And another way to understand this point is to think about nonviolent civil disobedience. Even nonviolent civil disobedience is not protected by our Constitution. Dr. King and SNCC, those people went to jail because they believed in civil rights and were willing to pay the cost. They never claimed that the Constitution gives people the right to break the law, much less take up arms against the government. So the facts are very clear. The Second Amendment does not give you the right to engage in insurrection. They should stop saying that. And Justice Scalia was extremely clear in the Heller decision that, that the Second Amendment does not give an unlimited right to carry whatever guns you Madam want, Chair, wherever Madam you want. Chair. I yield back to you, Madam Chair. The gentleman's time has, the gentleman is over time.